Hello there. It is the 7th of March 2013. And um, I'm probably going to be very slow to wind up here. Actually recording this while my son's at Beavers. <laughs> Usually I play tennis against a wall but it's raining and I fancy doing this. Haven't done a recording in a long time. I've um, I've been busy listening to others m mainly, uh, so obviously they do influence what I say. I've been looking, you know, having watched YouTube, we see our fair share of crackpots, and then you find someone or something who's pretty good. And uh, I watch them because I'm learning stuff. And the main guy I've been listening to for some time now is Cliff High. He does something called Cliff's Wujo. Search it in Google and you'll see his audios. Um, some of the ones earlier on I've listened to just absolutely bamboozled me a didn't have a clue what was going on. Some some of what he was saying. Um, but I think at the time I didn't appreciate some of the depths he goes into and probably didn't concentrate hard enough because there is logic in all he says. At least that's his logic. Um, he goes into stuff about time and that's probably that gets the most confusing and I I kind of stay out of that I mean I don't kind of believe you can go back in time to have a physical presence in past or future I kind of believe you could only possibly see the past or seeing possible futures you know through our subconscious anyway but someone actually getting in a time machine going to a different time I, you know I'm very skeptical about that and if they could they're probably extremely advanced um, you know way way beyond the levels that we could possibly get to for some some long long time anyway so, like I said, I haven't made a recording age. Just Cliff Hyde been listening to. Alex Jones. I think Alex Jones is, is very good. Um, they've been going on about the gun law thing now non-stop, which is fair enough because, you know, they see that as a big clincher and you can see the sense behind that. The Americans trying to... If they get all the guns taken away, then they can push their weight around a lot easier, can't they? Um, we don't have guns in this country. I think we're used to hiding. <laughs> it's Englishman's best defence, probably. Run away and hide. Why not? It works good. And um, So that's Alex Jones. I've been listening to GMS Israelites. I might have mentioned these guys before. I probably was doing did a video when I was watching these guys. I like to listen to them now again. I've got a great deal of respect for them. Um, I mean, who knows if they practice what they preach, but it does appear like they have given up, given up all the bad stuff. And for me, I can't give up smoking. I keep smoking. But although I've gone really healthy, I'm now... Yeah, because that's the other thing I've been listening to. John Barron, he's a nutritionist. And I've also found and listened to the Dr. Richard Schulzer videos on YouTube. And this is all about how, yeah, the body can cure itself of any ill. You just have to give it the right foods, herbs, treatments. A lot of it is just so common sense... You could do it, you know, 
then um, I th is that something I'm going to go into? Yes, it is. So yeah, I've done a lot of listening, and then now I'm going to try and do some talking. <clears throat> so, uh, actually planned, sort of. Right, okay. What is the state of the world today? I mean, let's just forget any sort of conspiracy theories for the moment. Let's just look at what a typical person has to go through. Say someone my age has a child, maybe they're with the partner, maybe they're not. But um, if you think about your life and what you're going to spend the rest of it doing... And if you want to sort of take the hours in a day and see how many you get free. Okay, we get weekends, which is a good thing, you know. It's better than some other places that don't even have the weekends. But blimey, blimey, do we need them? Because if you think about it, Monday to Friday, you're working a 40-hour week. You're also commuting to work. You're having to get ready for work. You're having to sleep, obviously. You're having to cook an evening meal. You're having to clean your house. Do your garden. Wash your car. And go shopping. So they're all the kind of basic things you have to do to survive. And they all take time. So... You know, what are you looking at at the end of the day is, what, a couple of hours time to yourself? And, you know, if you look after kids as well, then that's going to be even less. So, no wonder people are stressed and unhappy when you're basically having to do that all through the week. Yeah, and you get a weekend, so that's a, that's a good break. We are lucky in that sense, we get a weekend. Um, but still, you know, you think, for the rest of my life. And then, you know, if you work a normal full-time job and you get your four weeks annual holiday a year, it, there really isn't very much time for yourself. And my point is, yeah, you see people who work, you know, harder than that, longer than that. But no, one's taking commuting. You know, some people just leave an obscenely early in the morning, come back late, they wouldn't even get time to see their kids. Yeah, they're saving it all up for the weekend, I suppose. But um, that, just remember, you know, that is for the rest of your life. And I think that's why people get so stressed when they're in a bit of a <laughs> shitty job. And they're thinking... This is it. This is my future. So, <laughs> yeah. Now, just recently, I just heard on the news, we were all being encouraged to save for our pension. Right, so all the time we're doing this, slaving away, basically. We are slaves. Slaving away, paying tax here, there and everywhere. Tax on everything. Everything's taxed. Slaving away, and we're encouraged to put money away for our pension. Now, they made a statement on the radio today that uh, people generally put £125,000 into their pension fund. This is the recommended amount that you pay in to your pension. That's what it costs. Okay? Now, it was ex before it was expected that you would then receive an income of £15,000 a year when you retire. So if you work that out, 15 is into 125, I'm not sure it goes exact, uh, 90, 1532, 64. So that basically 
would mean that if you died after eight years, you would have pretty much got your money back. And if you live any longer, bonus, you've done well out of your pension. If you live shorter than eight years, not bonus, you lost money. But now they're saying that uh, today someone with a pension fund who's put away £125,000 will only get 5000 a year income from that. 5000 a year. Which means they'll have to live for 25 years after they retire just to get their money back. I mean... Is anyone going to go for that? Really? You know, it's disputable if £5,000 a year is enough to live on anyway. But you, you know, are you going to live 25 years after you retired? Now they've put up the age of retirement, so it's something like 66 or 67. By the time someone my age, 36, will retire. So, you're going to have to live till you're 99, or you're not going to get your money back. So, if it were me, I I mean, I'm self-employed, so I don't have a pension. But I certainly wouldn't be saving for a pension on those rates. <laughs> so it's a bit sticky in here. So, it's just a complete joke, isn't it, really? We are, they are taking the mickey out of us. And it's why we've put up with it, I think, in the past, has been all the new technology coming out. That's what's made us happy. That's what's made us strive. You know, radio, when they first brought out radio that must have been the most amazing invention you know you used to have to sort of read all your information now suddenly you could have a box in your house turn it on and someone is telling you the news you know you don't have to sit there and read someone's telling you I mean that must have been amazing and all the other technology coming out at the similar time flying and all sorts and then TV, and then colour TV, and then computer games, and then internet. And um, it's got to the point with me anyway that, you know, I'm not looking forward to the next level of technology. I genuinely fear it because all computers are doing now is taking away the need for human beings. They are just getting rid of people's jobs left, right and centre. You know, machines did cut, also cut down on the number of workers we had, so machines were kind of just as bad, but because there were so many new machines and this, that and the other, and they would need a person to operate the machine, and that you know, could be quite enjoyable. You've got some dangerous, exciting piece of equipment and you know how to work it. You know, that's pretty cool. And so with computers. So, but now you've got someone who can write a program and get rid of 1% of the jobs in the world. And that's happened quite recently in accounting. They've come up done some accounting software, you know, that's improving and that's just got rid of the need for half of the workforce. So that's why I fear the next stage and it doesn't seem to be coming very quickly because they don't seem to be doing much R&D at the moment. Although nanotechnology is starting to surface and as far as I can tell nanotechnology is basically just comp really really tiny stuff so that's the word nano comes into it because it's so small and they can make part so small and 
because of that size, they sort of become sort of quantum and can do amazing things like waterproofing your phone. You can soak it in a nano solution half an hour and when you take it out your phone is then waterproof for however long months I think currently so you know that's some amazing stuff and they're going to come out with some more amazing stuff but it's not really going to need people to operate it you know yeah, you'll have a need for one guy here or there who just understands it and knows how to make it work really you know vast the vast majority of us are not going to be expected to operate them sort of as any type of job and my job fixing computers you know is probably going to be around as long as society is because people in their pcs and they go wrong and they want them fixed so i'm probably safe in the sense of working but um, um, for the future now, you know, kids are going to school and they're being trained for what? Because there just isn't going to be much to do. And it's really worrying. <laughs> right. So... As we all know, we've been in some sort of financial crisis for the last few years. And um, we're probably not working as many hours as we were. We're trying. Um, but, yes, so where, where's all the money gone? Okay. You know, we heard about the housing crash and people borrowed too much and... Um, Sure, now when there's a crisis, people will hoard their money. But, um, how did the governments get in so much debt? That's what's making me wonder. What have they spent it on? Hmm? It just makes a lot more sense when you think the government had some massive secret project that was costing billions. Um,. And that's basically where all the money's going. Maybe they're using robots to do the work. Maybe that's why no one's talking about it. Maybe that's why it costs so much. Whatever they're doing, building bunkers or preparing some sort of cryo status for themselves so they can wake up in 30 years when the rest of the population is probably in their minds hoping to be wiped out. Not me. I intend on surviving. Anyway. So, yeah. It's just sort of clues as to um, why the society is so screwed up. You know. Governments aren't stupid. They would have known a long time ago. They have contingencies for everything. And I believe 30 years ago is when they started plotting this plan. And liberalism was part of it. And we'll come on to that in a bit. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned this before in a video about the Earth expansion. Now, this is something which can be proved. And um, I can tell you now how it can be proved. The Earth is expanding. It wasn't always as big as this. And in fact, it's done, it's growing in the last 200 million years as far as you seem to be aware from the evidence that I'm going to tell you. Um, and it seems like we might be coming into another growing phase. Now, I don't know if the previous growing has happened very quickly or if it's happened gradually and slowly, but it does seem to indicate that there are kind of these bursts of growth through over the last 200 million years. Now, said so this can be proved. It can be proved almost two ways. 
the first way is if you look at a, a map of the earth everyone's probably talked about before now how South America seems to fit into Africa and and we've all been told that yes the continents were all together in one landmass before you know and on the pictures they'll have this landmass called Pangaea and then they'll have all the water surrounding it so they're almost right but if you take the globe of the earth and you shrink the earth but leave the continents that we can see so basically what isn't the oceans leave them I think the same size but so they get closer to each other but they also get more curved now when this has been done they found that the continents fit exactly together not just almost but because they're more curved and everything and the planet gets sort of I think less than half the size it is now I mean two thirds of the earth is ocean so about a third of the size it is now all the continents fit together exactly and so that's the first bit of proof there's videos on YouTube if you want to have a look forget the guy who came up with it first um, but that that is the first bit of proof and that's pretty compelling proof now the second evidence proof and this will finally make proof <laughs> is that um, the age of the ocean floors is the key now we know earth is about three and a half billion years old and they found rocks on the earth's surface pretty much as old as that um, but not on the ocean floor the oldest bit of the ocean floor is 200 million years and that is near the, the coasts and the newest bit of ocean floor is about 70 million years old and that is in the middle of the oceans and if you're able to look at a map with all the water removed or you can see the surface underneath the water you'll see these lines going sort of north-south in the Atlantic Ocean and in the Pacific I think it's like a big circle almost but these are the newest bits of ocean floor and um, if you look on this YouTube video you'll then see the scales this bit's 70 million years old this bit's 110 million years old this bit's 130 million years old up until about 200 million years old so that is new crust so what's happened is that the earth has grown from within stretched the crust and all the magma has come out under the oceans um, and uh, thus the world has expanded it's grown I'm not going to get into where the mass came from just yet obviously that's a good question it does don't know and it's possibly as um, the Sun is hurtling around the Milky Way and the Milky Way galaxy is hurtling through space we may come into some areas of space that kind of give us mass um, I don't want to lose track here so the ocean's floor is, is expanding and the earth's expanding sorry to keep repeating myself um, and, and I, when I first heard this I thought well you know what about the water was the water there before or did the water come right during and I believe that the water was here before and if you think of a smaller earth with the same amount of water it's going to be sort of all over the place isn't it? it's going to be more water and that might be why you find fish fossils in the middle of France 
because quite possibly the earth was completely covered in water a long time ago. Maybe there's ice. Like I say, it's been here three and a half billion years. So when next time you want to picture the earth more than 200 million years old, think of it a third of the size and uh, covered in water. Right, so that's the earth expansion thing. <coughs> Ah, uh, right, yes. And um, why is this relevant now? It does look like we could be on the verge of a, an expansion happening right now. And um, one of the telltale signs that it might be happening is obviously lots of earthquakes, which we are ha having a massive frequency of earthquakes and potholes and sinkholes because although the crust see the reason when the earth expands so sort of cliff wuju a lot is from him that i regurgitate word for word <laughs> but he's a clever bloke so as the earth's expanding it's going to rip where the crust is thinnest which is in the oceans. But you are going to have effects on the land masses too. They are going to be strained, as it were. Um, I mean, I've been seeing potholes and cracks. I mean, the potholes... I know they said it's being caused by salt and everything, but I was, I've been looking at them, and it does look like you've just basically got a hole and the tarmac has just dropped a bit so a hole has been created so that's somewhere now I was thinking maybe it's with all the rain washing the mud from away from under the road I was thinking maybe that I think maybe that causes some of them and maybe that causes some sinkholes but it is quite possible that sinkholes and potholes um, are a sign that the earth is in an expanding phase and from what Cliff Wujo is saying, Cliff I, uh, as the something in the southern hemisphere, they're starting in the no round, they're starting around the equator first. That's right. These sinkholes and things we're noticing around the equator more first. But what they will do is start to spread north and south and there's a lot more land mass in the north than there is in the south but he reckons by the time you're getting them up in the Canada Alaska and Scandinavia then then we're going to be right on the verge of the major expansion when the earth's when the crust rips under the oceans and this could quite possibly be the global coastal event. And if you've heard about the global coastal event, it's been predicted by remote viewers, by webbot. And my own opinion is that we're all sort of feeling like something is going to happen, something major. Now, the global coastal event has always been a bit peculiar because we thought, well, if it was an asteroid that hit the Pacific, why would that cause all the shores around the Atlantic to have a problem as well? Um, and vice versa, if it hit the Atlantic, why would the Pacific have a problem as well? But with this Earth expansion, you've got two big rifts. You've got one in the centre of the Atlantic and one around the Pacific Rim. <coughs> What's that going to cause? Massive tsunamis hit smacking into all the coastals and that's where the majority of the population lives in coastal areas and you get something like that happening and then I think current sort of safety measures measures in society break down and especially if the powers that be governments and all the rich lot 
did know this was coming and have sodded off to their bunkers to leave us on our own. Society as we know it will break down. I mean, I'm, I think it's a good thing. I think it's what we need anyway. We need just to be able to get on on our own without communities, immediate communities, people you know, being around. So I'm quite optimistic. I think it could be better. I think people will pull together. And I think most people are good. Now, I just wanted to say something about um, these powers that be. You know, they certainly seem to be doing their best to keep us unaware of figuring any of this out. And like I said before, how they're doing it, well, how the technology has enraptured us all. And then if you can control what sort of films are made, what sort of TV programs are made, you can keep the people dumb. Mm -hmm. In their own little world. Sorry about that. Made a big noise. Um, and the other things they're doing to keep us dumb. Well, they're just. I mean, we're so busy for a start. And all we want to do is sit down and watch telly. We get subliminal messages. The food we eat is shit. Total shit. All the processed food, taking the goodness out of it. They take the goodness out of everything. If you get sick, you get given shit drugs made from waste products. And the doctors are just so signed up to the pharmaceutical industries they can't offer any alternative unless they can just tell you to exercise which at least they do which is good I mean the health health is a massive issue at the moment you know in the, these businesses who have hundreds of lobbyists just to get get their um chemicals approved by the food food industries like aspartame you know it's just nasty stuff and all their vitamins and everything they all come from waste products as well it was it calcium from ground down oyster shells shells vitamin D some byproduct waste of the petroleum industry and it's almost like they've just been allowed to sort of say, right, you know, this is good, we're now in control of everyone's health. Let's use waste products to make drugs for people. <laughs> That's going to make us so much money. Well, it has. They are amazingly rich, aren't they? Pharmaceuticals. <laughs> so, yeah, health, you know, and then we're just sitting down watching telly. We are natural beings. Pump us full of chemicals and shit, and then we just sit around and let it fester. That's gonna kill you. And it is. All these modern diseases, diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's, dementia. There, you know, that's the population control right there. That's what that's all about. Cut down the population. That's what I believe. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. We're not educated. We don't understand what foods are good for us. We don't. If you don't understand why, you're not. You're not going to be convinced. But the knowledge is out there. Go to johnbarron.org. Do type. Richard, Dr. Richard Schulze, S-C-H-U-L-Z-E, 
into YouTube and watch his videos. Absolutely fantastic. That's what we need to be told. But we're just being bamboozled. The amount of people dying from cancer now. And, um, you know, you go to the doctor, they do a scan, they say, you got cancer. And it's like, you know, Bleh. it's the worst thing in the world. But, oh my God, the big C, I'm going to die. You know, just that thought there, I'm going to die, that's enough to kill you anyway. Because the immune system has emotional receptors and acts based on your mood. So if you're in the mood of, I'm going to die, your immune system is going to shut down. But if you're like, I'm going to survive, yes, I feel great, then your immune system is going to work. And, um, yeah, look at those two people I mentioned, because you need to. You can feel so much better. But it's a minefield. If you think you can just go out and buy healthy food from the supermarket, well, you probably can, but quite a lot of it is going to be, you know, way, way, way down on the nutrition in the food that we were getting 50, 100 years ago. Because guess what? Farmers don't like to do a fallow year anymore. It used to be every is to rotate the crops and every four years the field would rest well because they don't do that there isn't the nutrition in the food and if it's just been packed with oh chemicals from the chemical industry well you know they make it grow faster and bigger but nutrition well you can't see that can you so they don't particularly care about that So, yeah, the health thing is a big issue. Chemtrails, they're quite possibly affecting our health as well. Fluoride in the tap water, other things in the tap water. Fluoride in your toothpaste, I've gone on about this before. And then there's the next thing, isn't there? The nanny state, how we're all being looked after and cushioned and, oh, you got rights, you got rights. And what this leads to is apathy. People, people then think, oh, i got rights, I sh I've got the right to be happy, I should be happy. Oh, why aren't I happy? I must, you know, sue the government or something. Or, oh, I'm not going to work then. They can pay for me for the rest of their life. And then you think, oh, by not working, I'm getting away with something, this is cool. But it's not because you're purposeless, unless you do stuff on the side. And, you know, what... You just get depressed. And then you probably take some of these dangerous, dangerous depressive <laughs> antidepressants. That's going to fuck you up even more. Uh, yeah, so this nannying, this softening, and we're not growing up to be tougher, we're growing up to be wet behind the ears. Do you know what? This is something else, and I'm not 100% sure on the facts of this is. Uh, we are being bombarded with estrogen constantly. I think in the food, in our air, in the air, in the water. Um, and estrogen is like the female hormone. We both have it, it's just females have it more. The opposite of test testosterone. Testosterone is the male hormone, which we both have, but men have more. And it's not good for women either. This uh, having more estrogen because it's the wrong the wrong type of estrogen. Estrogen levels in the body should be something like I think it's estradiol. One of them is supposed to be like ninety percent, and then a couple of the others smaller. And what they're pumping out or what we're getting in our systems is the, is the opposite. And for men and women, this sort of suppresses testosterone, which makes us feel like we've got less energy and more inclined than to sit around doing nothing. And, and it's also it's taking the manliness out of men. They don't want men. Men are not wanted. Like on the farm, you got a hundred cows, 
and one ball. They don't want more than one ball. Because five balls, well, then you got a problem, haven't you? Balls will be fighting. and So they don't want men, <laughs> cows. We used to use them to pull our cuts. We probably cut the balls off to keep them calm. Maybe they didn't. Anyway, the men aren't wanted, and that's how it's becoming with the humans. They don't want the men. They realise they can't get rid of all the men, but let's take the man out of the man, right? Let's fuck with their hormones, and we'll take the man out of the man. So that'll be as though there are no men. And um, that's why this woman's movement is being pushed. It's been... Come on, women. You've had your equality. Right? I mean, today, in today's world, being a woman, provided you're good-looking, because society's so judgmental on looks, uh, you're, you, you know, the world is your oyster. Um... Whereas for a man, it's a little bit not anymore, right? The men of previous generations, they had a good, t- they had their good time. Could even say when I was a kid that we boys ruled the roost. <laughs> Got told off all the time. But um, yeah, it's gone too far already. Yet they're pushing it even more. I walk into the co-op, and there's like. They're having a big tombola. It's for woman's aid. What? What? Woman's aid? You know, we've had equality. You don't have to keep pushing it more and more. Oh, they say, oh, well, there aren't as many women in the boardrooms of companies as there are men. Well, there aren't as many women dustbin people either. What are they called? (laughs) Dustmen. <laughs> there are very many dust women. So, you know, you can't have it all, all, every way you like it. Crying out loud. And yes, government has empowered single mothers. I and mean, I remember hearing about the single mothers when I was young, and I used, God, I used to feel sorry for them. Oh, those poor single mothers. And perhaps there was a day when that was bad. But now, a mother is better off if she's single. And he's phoning me and rudely interrupting me. I'm not listening to you. Yeah. Uh, I bet that was a woman. (laughs) Sorry. I'm not really sexist. Um separated from my wife you know she was better off getting rid of me you know she hasn't got to share the house with me there's more room for her she gets to make all the decisions in the house and the government give her money instead of me out there earning it and giving it to her I still have to give her money as well I have to pay it and I don't pay it that much because uh, I have my son three days a week, three nights a week. So I've got a good arrangement there. That's all I care about as long as I can see my son. It's time. Ooh. 15 minutes left. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, thought I'd give you my background. And, um,. You know, I haven't actually had sex with anyone since her. <laughs> did, nearly did on a couple of occasions. I was not that fussed now. I mean, it's been five years. It really doesn't bother me. So hopefully I'm becoming more susceptible to you know, the power women have over men. Short skirts and whatever. They certainly do have power over men. And they've got power over me too. I mean, oh. <laughs> I'm hopeless. Next woman who wants to have me, I'll be like, oh, I'm in love. And I'll probably give her everything. 
But anyway, luckily, I've been able to avoid that for a while. So I can, uh, I can resist the women's powers to a certain extent. I don't think about it all day. Let's say that, okay? I don't waste my time thinking crap about that all day, which on occasions I have, and I'm sure many people do. It really is a pointless waste of thoughts. It doesn't get you anywhere. It just gets you all frustrated. Right. So, the reason that the powers of be are giving women all the power, and believe me women, that's what is happening. You are being given the power because um, you're easier to manipulate. You know, you want to make a woman happy? Buy her a gift and make her happy. A bloke, you know, generally isn't so susceptible. You know, we blokes, we like to understand things, right? I'm not having a dig at women now, but you know, we hear it the other way around quite a lot these days, so maybe this is quite refreshing, why not? You know, the women can multitask, but they do a slapdash job of both things. Whereas a man likes to do something properly, likes to do it right, does one thing, concentrate and do it. I can hear all the squirks now. Oh yeah, but what about if you had to bring up three kids at the same time? Yeah, I bring up a son and when I play with my son I have to concentrate on that and play with my son. And then I say, look, now I'm going to go and do something else. <laughs> and you do something else. So, yeah, one task at a time. What's wrong with that? Do it properly. Much better you don't have to do it twice. Or get shabby results. Um... So if I don't have time to do a job, I just don't do it. Simple as that. I'd rather not do it at all than do a really quick shit job. That's the way I work. So, they've, they've used you women. You're being used. And isn't it, don't you ever wonder, it's, it's the good looking women who do well. If you're an ugly woman, then you really do have to have some talent to get on. And plenty, plenty of women do have lots of talent. I'm not saying that. I think, you know, I love women, of course I do. I like being with a woman. It's, it's nice. Um, so, yeah, if you're an ugly woman and you haven't got much talent, well, you're just as bad off as an ugly man then. Or even normal man. <laughs> but, I don't know what ugly has got so much to do with it anyway. I think most kids you see potentially good looking. I think it's life which makes people ugly. And then it's emotions, you know, they're always unhappy. That's what, where I think ugliness comes from. Anyway, we wasn't talking about ugliness. Kind of went off the track there, sorry. <clears throat> so you women are being used to keep the powers that be in control and keeping people happy with the state of society. I mean, because we've seen what women can do when they're not happy. Whew. You know, and I bet all a lot of those witches who were burned hundreds of years ago, I bet they were very influential women. And I think our society in the past, I think at some point at least, women have been the boss. Like women horses, they're the boss of the groups and stuff. Men, I think men are a bit loners really. I think we're supposed to be a bit loners. I think we're supposed to drift in and out. But, you know, I'd love to live in a com community and guys, we'd go off hunting for a few days, you know. That's the way it should be, when I was partnered up and married, and everything, I was so bored, sleeping in the same bed every night, 
you know, being with the same woman every night. And I think most people, if they're honest, they do. They, you're with a woman for about six months or a year, and then all you're thinking about is different coloured hair woman. <laughs> a woman with different breasts, different bum and everything. You know, that, on the sexual level, yeah, the monogamous thing. I mean, I'd, you know, if I, I was always monogamous. I was really into my women. I really was into them. But I think I, I had to. Otherwise, I would have got bored. And I wouldn't have wanted to feel like that. I wouldn't have wanted to feel like I wasn't attracted to my wife. So I think the way I operate is I get really into them and, like, devoted to them. Unfortunately, that tends to sort of put them off a bit. Put them off me. Hmm. So anyway, well, that's the relationship thing. I think that, you know, I think the current model is not quite right. I think in the past you had marriage and the men were dominant and they bossed their wives around. In a way that worked. And it works with some women who are dominant and boss their men around. With some men that will work, not with me it won't. Uh, so that, you know, that can work. To have the equality, the equalness. I think in today's society, when there's so much around to sort of make you wonder about the grass somewhere else, if you grew up in a community and you met someone when you were five and that was your lifelong partner, I think that's the only way it can work. I don't think it can work when you've got previous, previous loves. I don't reckon it really does. Works for a while. I'm not sure. I'm not old enough. Don't know yet. Not wise enough. Um. So, yeah. Sorry, struggling off the point here. Um. So, so why are they using the women? Well, the women seem to be going along with it. So now we're pushing it even more. We've got Women's Day coming up soon. Is becoming women, women, women. The estrogen, they're taking the man out of the men. We've got to grow our beards. We've got to do a bit of hunting. You know, we've got to be our own men. Be your own boss. Since I've been self-employed, that's the best thing I've ever done because I make all the decisions. So I've got good at making decisions. I've had to do all the planning. I've been able to do other things, think other thoughts, explore other opportunities. It's freed me up to understand, to find out all the other things. If I'd been working for a firm, it wouldn't be like that. Because my mates would be workmates. We'd go out and talk about work, because that's what always happens. You kind of suddenly really enjoy talking about work when you're not in work. It's weird. Um, so yeah, being self-employed is a good thing. Men, you got to be your own men. <laughs> and wait to see what happens. Check out what you can eat. You can eat fucking everything, mate. You can you can even eat grass. Don't swallow it. Chew it. Get some nourishment out of it. And spit it out. So when the time comes, when the shit hits the fan, society falls. You make sure you can survive. And then you can help others. And we don't need no government, man. We human beings are not going to die out. Because what they're doing to us, I can't hardly believe that they are humans. Why would they do that to their own kind? So God ain't going to let it happen either. God isn't going to let their plan work. And there is a God. Let's not get into that. Just look at the universe. Eat healthy. Look up John Barry and everything because you've got to know this health stuff makes sense just watch a few videos Dr. Richard Schulzer 
you'll start to understand. Always have positive mind. Feel your electric charge in yourself. Feel your energy so that you can spread it to others as well. They're trying to reduce our energies as well. I don't know if I had a final point. I think I'm pretty much there. <laughs> I did plan to go on about the women thing. Kind of what inspired this a little, a little bit. Also the global coastal event and sinkholes. Chemtrails, they piss me off. Try, don't try and, I'm not gonna let it affect my positivity. Because if that's important, you gotta keep that, keep on to it, keep hold of it. Because it spreads. And the more you keep it, the more you, easier you can keep it as well. Don't let the negativity in. Expel it off. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. If anyone listened. Right.